Welcome and well met. It is I, the Quonset Manager, and I've been wandering about the Hushed River Valley. I've been attempting to unravel the many stories that ended here. This video will not be handling all the bodies found in Hushed River Valley. Instead, I will be tackling a few of the more interesting deaths. Hence why I called this video, Three Snow Shelters and a Murder. We'll begin with the snow shelter that we find above Stair Steps Lake. Here we find an intact campsite of a bow enthusiast. He has gathered plenty of wood. He has a coffee that was warming by the fire. His shelter is at 100% when we find it. And nearby we find unharvested birch. Over here we find a deer that clearly was taken down by said bow enthusiast. But what happened to the owner of this campsite? Well, if you go up the rocks next to this campsite, above it you will find these climbable rocks. If you mountain goat along, eventually you will find this guy. As you can see, he died with a knife in his hand. Curiously, it, he appears to be left-handed. So how did he die? Well, nearby you can find wolves that are attracted to the deer that spawn around Stairstep Lake. Normally, the wolves cannot reach you if you are above Stairstep Lake, However, this particular stretch of snow can be climbed from below at the right angle. Assuming this fellow, for whatever reason, went exploring without his bow, perhaps he was just having a look around, and he went a little too far and found the grade too steep to go back up, he was forced to descend to the lake and make his way around, at which point he encountered a hungry wolf. I'm betting he regretted not bringing the bow. So this first body seems rather cut and dry, except for three questions. First, where did he get the bow and arrows in the first place? Second, why didn't he harvest the two birch saplings? Third, why did he leave his bow behind? To answer the first question, we must answer the second. Having traveled to Mountain Town, I went over to the nearest crafting table. There I found a hatchet lying on the ground outside the trailer by the fire. Is it possible that the body we found was the owner of this hatchet? If so, it would appear that he came to this trailer to make his bow and arrows, then left to travel to Hush River Valley. When he got here, he found the birch saplings, then realized he left his hatchet back at the trailer. What we're going to go through is his head. I have no idea what he was actually thinking, but if you do consider it, that he was of the forgetful sort. I think he was trying to get back to the trailer to grab his axe. And he got turned around. Perhaps it was snowing or something. And as it turns out, our forgetful-minded friend, true to form, forgot to bring his bow and arrows with him, just like he forgot to bring his hatchet with him. It would appear that in the end, what killed this man was his own bad memory. The lesson to be learned, always double-check what equipment you have on you before leaving your base camp. Next, we move on to the second snow shelter that can be found on the map. This one appears in a centralized area. This camp is the other sort of hunter, the guy who hunts for rabbits with snares. Odd thing, the rabbits don't spawn in the immediate area, so it is unclear exactly where he got this bunny. This rabbit carcass is one of the rabbits that you can pick up. They have no weight, and as of the writing of this script, the bunny never decays. As long as you never attempt to harvest it, that is. So if you're looking for a rabbit corpse to decorate your home, there's this one. The rabbit that occasionally spawns in the cave between Mystery Lake and Mountain Town, and a rabbit that sometimes spawns in the ice caves on the Hushed River Valley map. Now where is the owner of this camp? Well, right here around the corner, right nearby this maple sapling. Not shown is the hatchet he randomly spawns with. Alas, on three attempts I didn't get it to respawn, but I did see it once. I foolishly didn't take a picture at that time. But it does appear here. He dies face down with a hatchet in his hand. So, what killed him? You have to climb up one of two climbing rock faces to get to this spot. 
one of which you can see here a short distance from one of the many caches that dot this valley. So wolves really can't get to him. I think the clue is this pile of wood back at the campsite. I've done this myself. Found a huge oversized log that can only be harvested with a hatchet. Some are just too big for the hacksaw. They can take hours to harvest, and if you are not careful, you can get frostbite. Now, judging by the pile of wood, I would guess that our unfortunate friend here made the mistake of going out to harvest just one more branch, and in the process, the weather turned bad, and he died from hypothermia. I myself got frostbite and lost a finger when I made the mistake of ignoring the weather and tried smashing a pile of pallets into firewood with a hammer. Another important lesson, be mindful of your environment. Now, the third snow shelter is actually two but only one version will spawn in any given game. I'm speaking of the signal fire. There are two spots where the signal fire can spawn. When it spawns, the two sites are almost identical. There is the snow shelter, a backpack, a campfire with moose meat, sometimes a moose satchel, and a dead guy with a hatchet next to him. Now, at one spawn site, the wolves can reach you, so it is possible that a wolf did in this guy. But the other side is a location where wolves cannot path to you. If we assume this is the same scene, just spawning in different locations, then the cause of death for one should be the cause of death for both. But how did he die? I want to go with died from exposure, but I don't really feel that answer. The fact he is flat on his back instead of falling forward to face plant. People when they collapse due to exhaustion usually wind up leaning forward and gradually get smaller, with drooping shoulders and bent spines. So if you die from hypothermia, one would expect to find the body lying face down. This body is flat on its back, with an axe at the ready. But the placement of the axe is different. The implication is one is left-handed and the other is right. I assume this might be a programmer's error? Could it be a murder? Maybe. But the campsite is unmolested. A murderer would have looted the site for anything useful, especially food. I am forced to conclude one thing. Trombley. Trombley as a mass murderer enjoys the suffering of others and is a demonic evil from beyond the pale. He lacks any human need, so he would have murdered this fellow just for the fun of it, then disappeared into the misty fog following an otherworldly and alien agenda none of us will truly understand. Or, maybe the guy tripped and hit his head on something while chopping wood and died. Either way, we have to wonder, why the signal fire? Who was he trying to contact? Was it just the slow, crushing loneliness motivating him to contact others? Is he a government agent working with Jeremiah? Is he a forest talker working for Methuselah? I don't think we'll ever truly find out, at least until episode 3 comes out in December. That is our last snow shelter, and now as promised I give you a murder. Here we have the overhead view of the murder. This is located in the ice caves. Let us look closer and hope for some clues. We have a man in a pool of his own frozen blood, rifle in hand and a knife in his back. It's hard to tell, but this looks like a kidney shot, or perhaps into the lower part of his lung. Nearby is a man who had that lantern you see in the background. I moved it for better lighting of the crime scene. This man is quite dead, with a sewing kit and a bandage next to him. I suspect what happened is that this man stabbed the other in the back. The other man somehow got off a shot that wounded his attacker? Perhaps. He then expired from the stabbing and fell face forward and died. The attacker then sat down to try and bind his own wounds. But he wasn't fast enough, and he died, bandage in hand. But how did the victim get the shot off on the guy who stabbed him in the back? We need more answers. Let us look for a motive. With the whole crime scene before us, one must wonder, what is up with that backpack? That's quite a bit of food to have spilled on the ground. And there is more in the backpack. So if I were to guess, I would say that they were fighting over this backpack of food. If we add in this little tidbit, I have an alternate theory, one that reverses the roles of these two men. 
These two men met in this ice cave. The man with the rifle points it at the other. He demands the backpack. The man on the ground gives up his food supply. The man with the gun shoots anyways. Since we find the rifle empty, that shot must have been the man's last bullet. The rifleman turns to flee with the backpack in one hand and the rifle in the other. The victim of this robbery is truly angry, and in a fit of rage pulls out an improvised knife and throws it at the back of the rifleman. It strikes true, hitting him in the lower lung on the right side, and the man falls face first upon the icy ground. The rifleman drowns in his own blood. The victim in this, the man we find sitting at this rock, stumbles back and tries to bind his wounds. But this is no wolf bite, this is a bullet. So you need the sewing kit to have any hope of stopping the blood loss. Alas, our victim is too late, and he expires. But he dies having the satisfaction of knowing that he sent his murderer to hell before he passed on. And that is the conclusion of this video. I will continue to explore Hust River Valley. I hope I will find new and interesting tidbits of lore to keep you entertained. Thank you for stopping by the Bear Island Tourist Kiosk. Be sure to stop by the Quonset Garage if you find yourself needing any supplies. Just remember our motto, Quonset Garage, where the water is always free.